Hi guys, my name is Dan, I'm a veterinarian, and today, Addison's disease, or hypoadrenal corticism in the dog. What to expect at home, how the veterinarian diagnoses it, and what is the game plan long term to keep your doggy happy, healthy, and comfortable. Addison's disease is a failure of the adrenal glands to function as they should. The adrenal glands are complicated, no joke. The adrenal glands will produce cortisol and they also produce something called a mineral corticoid. We're going to think of these two things as being limited or not present if a dog has Addison's disease. Addison's disease can be complicated. When you have Addison's disease, you can have atypical and you can have typical. Atypical meaning it doesn't follow the usual rules. It's a little bit different. So with that being said, atypical is a failure of cortisol from being produced in the adrenal gland. Typical, the ones we expect to see, is a complete failure of the entire adrenal gland, meaning we don't have cortisol and we don't have the mineral corticoids. These are a bit easier to diagnose and you feel like a rock star as a veterinarian when you figure these out. We're gonna talk about the atypical first. A doggy's body relies on cortisol. Cortisol is really important. It really keeps them healthy. So when a dog has failure to produce cortisol, you will see a handful of things. The doggy may become lethargic, they may have some diarrhea, they may throw up, they may fail to thrive, they may lose weight, they may not be themselves. That's why it's a great pretender because the lack of cortisol can produce all kinds of different symptoms. What a veterinarian will do is they will run all those tests we talked about before, like x-rays and blood work. They're gonna do all this fun stuff as I always chat about. The one thing they're gonna do that they usually don't do is an ACTH stimulation test. There are a couple other tests you can do, but this is probably the most common test your veterinarian's gonna recommend. By doing this test, they'll get some blood, and then they'll give a medication to stimulate the adrenal glands and get another blood sample an hour or two later. If the blood sample, guys, comes back and it's low, it's like not working, there's no cortisol in the system, your veterinarian has diagnosed at least atypical Addison's. If we have the other form of it, which is the typical Addison's, you're gonna see even more problems. Let's dive into that. Typical Addison's will have all the atypical problems, no cortisol, with the lack of mineral corticoids too. The adrenal glands are amazing. They do so much work for the dog's body. The mineral corticoids are just that, mineral. Think mineral corticoids, think electrolytes. The way we're gonna diagnose typical Addison's is we have a little bit of help on our blood work. When we pull that blood work before we even do the ACTH stimulation test, which we need to do to diagnose it, to rock solid lock it in, we will pull some blood. And unlike the atypical, the typical Addison's will have abnormal electrolytes. And in the textbook, it tells us what to look for. To give you an idea, the electrolytes the sodium, potassium, they're all off. It's, it's, it's consistently all off. Your potassium, whoo, through the roof. Your sodium, whoo, down low. It's just off. In those cases, we can start to give like sodium chloride IV to push that sodium back up and wash that potassium out of the body. Once we start stabilizing the doggy, we're then gonna do an ACTH stimulation test just like the atypical. That will allow us to diagnose it and then treat it. Treatment time, here we go. We've diagnosed it, either as atypical or as typical, but we know we have Addison's. We know we have a failure of the adrenal gland to work normally. We're gonna give steroids for the atypical or for the typical, and a veterinarian will also give a mineral corticoid, either as a tablet or an injection, for the full-blown typical Addisonian dog because they can't regulate their electrolytes on their own. Addison's is pretty darn confusing, but if you understand the idea that the adrenal gland is not working, and if you have an early form of it or an atypical form, you need steroids to stabilize a dog, or if you have a full-blown typical Addison's, you need steroids, and you also need a mineral corticoid medication to stabilize the electrolytes. Either way, Addison's is a really tough disease that's really darn serious. Dogs can definitely pass away from it. So we need to see the veterinarian, we need to get it diagnosed, we need to get it treated, and we need to make sure that we stay on top of it with regular visits to the veterinarian to make sure our doggy stays stable. 
even after being treated, most dogs with Addison's will have an Addisonian crisis. I know. That means that, you know, their, their, their steroids or their mineral corticoids just aren't perfect. And they get out of whack for a little bit and then get really sick again at any point. Being super diligent, making sure you understand exactly what your veterinarian wants you to do, and making sure that you are confident with your knowledge of Addison's is paramount in keeping your dog healthy and safe long term. Guys, I hope that was crazy helpful. Thank you so much for watching. You all have just a great day. And if your dog has Addison's, if you have any experience with Addison's, please share below. You guys, take care. Like, subscribe.